Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to your Arsenal Advisor. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos dedicated to trying to figure out how to get my uh, 6.8 SPC AR-15 carbine to uh, cycle properly. Right now, it um, it just, uh, the bolt catch will catch on the face of the carrier and not the face of the bolt. Um, so that's, um, so that's why it doesn't work, because that means it may not um, strip the next round out of the magazine, or if it won't hold up far enough to swap out another magazine and hit the bolt catch, the bolt will ride over the magazine, and, and so so it's not working correctly. Um, it functions, I mean, it shoots, it recoils, it ejects shells, it does load others, but when you get down to that last round of the magazine, it doesn't fully um, retract the, um, you know, the bolt so that the catch catches on the face. Uh, my hypothesis is that it's not getting enough gas. Um, the adjustable gas system, I, I, I went from like l the lowest setting to the highest setting, and it doesn't seem to uh, improve the amount of gas getting through there. Um, so I checked with Wilson, got some of their recommendations. I checked with Daniel Defense, because I know they had some 18-inch uh, barrel mid-length gas system 6.8 rifles. Uh, they mentioned the gas uh, port dimensions they use, and I think it's basically the same as what's in here, so not sure why the um, it's not the, the 110 grain ammunition is not providing enough gas. Um, so anyway, you can just see what I, I started out with. Uh, I swapped out the gas system. You can see how I'm going through it. Uh, there's some information about how I uh, took the muzzle, muzzle brake or flash pressure off the front of the barrel, and some other information about checking the um, Checking the gas tube on the replacement to make sure there's no obstructions in that. Just a little technique I came up with. Um, anyway, so again, thanks for tuning in. And uh, you just go ahead and, I mean, this, this video is not going to have the final um, solution that worked. This is, like I said, this is going to be part one. Um, so I'm going to tell you that up front. Um, so you can kind of peruse through the rest of the video uh, as you like and kind of see how I embarked upon this uh, journey of sorts. So, um Again, uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, tuning in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to uh, get into this thing. So just in time, we got the uh, Air Precision uh, 0.75 inch uh, gas block, one with the nitrided finish and uh, the logo. Um, I had to get the gas tube um, with it because it's um, it's a low profile, so I needed the gas tube with the correct bend so that would then uh, center on the um, opening in the front of the upper receiver. Um, if you can kind of see, I see it here shortly. If not now, um, the gas tube is straight because the adjustable gas box is a little 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 taller. Maybe I can kind of aim it. Into the camera so you can kind of see. At any rate, we'll take the hand guard off and be able to see it then. Alright, so hand guard just has some uh, hex drive uh, screws. Uh, when I had first uh, put this together, I had used blue Loctite. And when I first took them out, uh, there was like this white, I guess it turned white. I don't know if that's something that happens to Loctite everywhere or because it's the barrel nut that gets hot. But anyway, it didn't take a lot of force to unscrew them. I kind of cleaned off the threads. Um, when I get this thing put together in this worker, I might get, go ahead and use, use the blue Loctite. Um, this has got a barrel nut that you have to... Um, you have to get the barrel nut on just right so that the top of the top rail lines up with the upper upper receiver. Um, so I'm going to go around uh, the barrel nut there, take off the screws, and I like to put the screw, same screw back in the same same hole it came out of, you know, in case there's any mating of parts going on. So I, I just marked them in tape, like for example, um, this one says bottom set, rear and front. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing that. 
All right, so I've got all the uh, screws out. So, so just slide off the uh, barrel nut. And you see it's got the uh, little, little key mod covers and front sight on there. Now, if you notice up on the gas block, I have um, this showed upside down. Put some tape on it, and I marked a line before I uninstalled it the first time because I wanted to see if when I installed it um, a second time, you know, trying to make sure that I, I, I use the factory dimple and factory screw on the bottom of the gas block that I was kind of curious to see if when I lined it back up at the... At the um, the witness lines didn't line up, maybe signaling that I had it on improperly and having the uh, gas port um, somehow obscured, possibly by putting on it incorrectly. So what I did was, well, I just reinstalled it. I actually used the uh, front set screw to kind of put in place and so I could make sure that the hole was still centered on the factory uh, dimple. And it was, so I, I tightened it down and took it back to the range and retested it and worked the same. Um, as in, you know, not working, <laughs> not cycling properly. Um, same range trip, I, I, I tested some of the components. I took the uh, bolt carrier group out. I put a 5.56 millimeter uh, bolt, or bolt in it, used it in my XM177 carbine. Um, so that, appeared, that worked. Um, I think I took the lower as a whole shot. Um, and use that on the on the uh, XM177 seem to work um, properly. So uh, another thing to point out is when I put this together, um, I have a half inch wide flats for you know, torquing the bolt nut. So I'd made a um, crow's foot attachment. I say made because I had to sand it down from whatever dimension it was to half inch. So it's potential that when I take off the, the, the front uh, muzzle device, I may um, may fix this into the vise so that I don't twist anything else uh, in, in so doing. Anyway, so I'm going to go uh, take some more of this, uh, take the gas system off now. Actually, I may leave it. I think actually the next step is um, taking the muzzle device off. Now, I use rock set. There's another video I was watching from YouTube. Somebody, they boiled, they put the barrel in some boiling water for like three to five minutes. Um, and it loosened it right up. I knew, I don't remember the instructions of rocks, it said something about submerging in water and apparently water will you know, undo the bond of the, um, the rock set. But uh, I'm gonna just go off of like what I saw in that video. Um, so I'll do that and then I'll take the gas system off. All right, so I got some uh, water boiling to work on getting this uh, muzzle device off. Um, I got a torque wrench attached to the um, crow's foot here up against the, I'm just kind of working, um, you know, the angle. I'll make sure that I have opposing force when I get down. This will be hot and I don't want to cool off too soon or whatever. So I'm just making sure they're set up. All right. So my thoughts are the barrel nuts tightened down to the upper. Got the barrel in between it. As long as that doesn't move, everything else should stay tight um, while I undo this. I'm not expecting a lot of force. As long as I resist it at the nut here, um, I don't think I'm going to undo any of the um, tightening back here between the barrel nut and the upper receiver or the barrel indexing pin that's, you know, in the barrel extension that's, you know, inside the upper receiver. All right, submerging just the front of the barrel with the muzzle device and the uh, boiling water. Got the timer. I'm gonna try three minutes first. Try not to let the barrel touch the bottom of the pot or rest on anything. I'm just trying to 
just keep the, the hot water, boiling water only on the uh, front of the barrel. See if uh, see if this worked. All right, so guess is three minutes is not enough. Alright, so I went back to YouTube and found a video um, done by the Flex Bar Corporation. I think they're the ones that own, produce, rock set. So their method was sit it in hot water 20 minutes. Um, now their example was they glued a handle on a mug, then they put the mug in the water for 20 minutes and the handle fell off. I'm not sure that's exactly the same as the situation I got here, but it's, it's different, um, quite a different method. Like longer time, not necessarily boiling water, and I'm still having a lot of resistance. Now, when I want to put this on, the timing washer did develop some some force or frictional force besides just the, you know, the rock set that would just stay on and glue everything together. So still not coming off. All right. So just to illustrate, I put this, um, the upper into one of these wheeler vice blocks, put in my other vice and put the little insert um, try to guard against crushing when I press down on the, um, you know, the vice block, but, um, not doing anything there. I did use a lot of force. Seemed like I was having the same resistance with the other methods. And then I got this older, um, adjustable wrench from, did it from yesteryear. Um, and it's, I think it's just, it's nice. It's, it's sharper than that other uh, wrench I was using. Note to self: get a new, um, you know, armor's wrench. This fit nicely. I just, I just tried turning a little bit, and then I noticed it moved. And so I'm gonna, you know, twist this the rest of the way off. I can guess I can do it, you know, by hand now. Um, it's hand tight, or in this case, hand loose. Um, this little timing washers loose. I don't know if that would have gotten any of the rock set on it. This rear support's not tightened down too much. So anyway. So if you see in there, I don't know if it's really anything to see. Um, just hope the barrels, all this stuff is okay. When I was torquing on it before, it seemed like there was um, a few squeaks happening. So I hope nothing was moving differentially. So, I mean, that's kind of what I uncovered in the barrel. 
or the end of the barrel. Not really sure if the rock set has um it's more around near the bottom, like down down here, or whether it was you know went all along the threads. Can't remember how I applied it. I probably tried to apply it uniformly. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the gas system, figure out, you know, what, take a look at those different uh, gas port dimensions just to see what Wilson puts on theirs. This is a Wilson Combat 6.8 SPC2, SPC2, um, 1 and 11 twist. Bro, I'm trying to think if that'll come across. Looks kind of backwards to me. I'm not sure how it's going to come across. Um, the gas block screws on the um, Aero Precision. I'll try to see if I can show them together. They don't quite. They don't line up perfectly and that's okay. So I'll just put them together just like I would have without putting a dimple. I'm not gonna put another new dimple on the barrel. I mean, two's enough. I don't like really going too deep with it anyway. So I'm gonna just center it on, I think, I think the, um, it may be such that the screw that centers over the factory dimple is aligned and since it's a wider space it'll just be this front one that'll stick out a little bit ahead of the um the other dimple made for the uh the wilson combats um adjustable gas block system i need a light in here on that i was just trying to show that it looks like the um the dimple is centered in the um the rear, um, that's the factory dimple. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I had this on right. I just wanted to illustrate that. All right, so here's the, uh, the factory dimple. And here's my uh, dimple I made, one of my early videos. And it looks like, I'm not sure, there's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of uh, tooling or marks from the set screw maybe a little bit forward of there i'm not sure if that was on the first installation or second one but not that big a deal now because we're gonna have a different one on here's the gas port i try to figure out what dimension that is yeah apparently stick drill bits in there that may relate to those different different diameters um, i got a little test fitting here um i got the uh bottom of the gas tube right over the um, gas port for the most part and then verifying that the bend in the tube clears the uh, barrel nut hmm. I can't really see it too well but yeah, it's going into the center of the uh, front of the uh, upper receiver so before I put it all back together I'm going to double check the um, Barrel nut and alignment of the handguard. See if I can put the handguard on straight. If I can put it on straight, I'll leave it. But if it's a little off, I'll probably start messing with the barrel nut and try to move it. Just uh, maybe reinstall it. Um, just because I'm not sure when I was wrenching on it before, before the uh, muzzle device finally broke free, whether anything moved. I don't think it did. But um, won't hurt to check. The Aero Precision gas tube came with a um pin. All right, <clears throat> let's get back into this. So what I did was I finally, finally got the uh, flash presser off, and I, I went back and put the handguard back on, make sure everything, the barrel nut and everything, was still lining up, and nothing moved when I was trying to wrestle the uh, flash suppressor off um, probably clean this up a little bit more um, 
So it looks like everything will go back the way I, I wanted it to or the way it was lined up. So went ahead and did some looking at the, um, the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, the, uh, gas block, just trying to make sure that there weren't any, uh, obstructions in that, um, trying to see if you can see the little hose through the, um, the thing, verifying that, uh, that's open. All right, so now for the gas tube, sort of sent some string string down through and I could see it and I thought maybe I'd try to put something a little bigger on the end of it and pull that through just verifying there's no um, unseen obstructions in there and let's see I threaded it through from this end I want to see I'll get that red uh, piece of plastic in looks um, probably see it in there Not pulling through. Let's see. Okay, got it moving. You see the end. And it's come free. So that's open. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the um gas tube on the gas block. And then, um, then I'm going to just put it on, uh, I'm gonna put the set screws in, um, probably just going to, um, just tighten it down without any Loctite and then, um, put the handguards back on, take it to the range and test it. And, um, then if everything's working good, I may take out one, one screw at a time, put some thread locker on it. Or take it all apart, clean it up, clean up the threads, and put the Loctite back in. So that's uh, that's my plan right now. Oh, one other thing, um, I did verify the gas port was 0 0.076 inches. I think um, could be a little little wider. Um, Daniel Defense, they said they're 18-inch uh, um, or mid-length uh, gas ports on their mid-length gas system on 18-inch barrels was 0 0.076, and I think that was um, that was about a 564th bit. I was able to put in there to verify it's basically the way they make their barrels. So this barrel is like that. So I'm hoping that this gas port's not not an issue. So I'm hoping that um, the new low profile gas block from Aero Precision um, will have less less length in here between the gas and it'll be a more direct shot down through the gas tube into the action. Hoping that that'll lead into um, you know more gas to operate the, uh, the bull carrier group um, properly. And then um, I'll test that, uh, I have some I have some, uh, like a, a JP Enterprises double crush washer I want to try out. Um, that and also have a, um, a jam nut. That's another possibility. Um, I'm hoping those things, I mean, a, a crush washer usually centers itself pretty well. Um, jam nut, that would screw onto the thread, so that should also center. Like, timing washer worked. Put a nice snug fit while the, uh, the rock set, you know, set up. Um, so it was secure, but there was some play that um, could occur. When you tighten it down, it, it might slide. So I didn't really, at the time, devise a method for keeping the um, this uh, timing shim centered. So that's just something to think about in the future. If everyone thinks of that. These come in sets. There's their timing shims. They got like little, little, little notches on the, um, the edges to tell you how thick they are so that you can kind of determine which, which, which shims are thicker so you, you can, you know, test fit the uh, muzzle device. If you get it within 10 to 30 degrees or something, you're supposed to be able to tighten it with a wrench um, to get a nice snug fit. Um, but then 
have it secured by, by something like rock set. Just a little word on that uh, technique. <clears throat> okay, so I used my uh, Wheeler Delta Series Air 15 bench block. Try to find some contour so I could, um, I guess, uh, punch this uh, screw into the um, gas tube and the, the gas block. Um, put this tape on, on the surface here in case I had missed and I would try to avoid, you know, scarring up the, uh, the surface of the gas block. I'd use this tape so I could see how deep the thing was because I had to hold the gas tube in there a little bit while, um, while I got the, uh, got the, uh, roll pin started. I use these starter, I guess it's like a starter roll pin punch. Goes inside and holds it so it doesn't fall out. And once you get it going and you're too close to use this anymore, then you can use this um, kind of a uh, pin that's got the uh, it's got the uh, little I guess uh, I guess you could call it sort of a nipple uh, on, on the end of it there to um, kind of fit inside the roll pin and get it going uh, the rest of the way. And then and I just checked it, make sure it was like to get it through the whole whole one side to the other um so it's just like a complete um thing i can kind of see the um the gas the hole in the, the gas tube from underneath the uh, the gas port here in the gas block can't really see it but i was able to stick this uh, red hose into it Here's something to note. Back up these um, set screws for the uh, air precision gas block. They have uh, little teeth on them. I'm not sure how well that's showing up, but just wanted to mention that. Alrighty. So, got the uh, gas block on the barrel. Did all the, uh, put the set screws in there, fairly, uh, I guess hand tight. Didn't use any Loctite, put these bolts back in just to keep the hand guard on there. Um, married back up with the, uh, lower. I'm going to, I guess, go ahead and test this, um, you know, without the uh, muzzle device. Uh, that doesn't need to. It's just a, it's just an unfinished condition. Um, but I'd like to hurry up and figure out if the thing works now or will work properly with the um, just a regular low-profile gas tube, non-adjustable, uh, with all the same products or same equipment on it as before. Um, actually I actually have some other, I think I already mentioned one of the other parts, I got some other muzzle uh, fastening um, hardware in, in the mail. Um, I'll put that all back on, um, provided this is cycling well. I'm not going to waste time with the front of it if it's not going to work. Okay, so we'll uh, move on to the next section after we find out if we got some um, successful uh, operation. All right, so, um, so there you have it. Um, still working on trying to figure this uh, this thing out. Um, so I guess the, like the high points uh, to mention are, you know, I was, I was happy to find out that I think I had the adjustable gas system installed correctly. Um, I had uh, reinstalled that once and tried it, um, put it back on, but I didn't think it was out of alignment. So when I put it back on, it was already pretty much putting it back on or securing it the same way it was when I started and, and the, uh, the cycling didn't improve. Um, I put a non-adjustable gas system on after uh, some recommendations from Wilson Combat um, to not use an adjustable gas system. Um, I checked those parts for obstructions before I put them on or some, you know, some little bit of technique I came up with. Um, Removing rock set. Um, I had recalled when I put it on that the instructions said something about water and I had seen some videos about put them in, 
in boiling water um, for a certain amount of time. Didn't seem to work too well for, for this rifle. So then went to Flex Bar, you know, the, the people who make the, uh, the rock set, and then the 20 minutes hot water. And I finally got it to come off after, after doing that. Um, although I think if I had to do again, I'd probably maybe do 30 minutes, maybe start off with some hotter water. So I I'd used the boiling water after it cooled a little bit, but it was still pretty hot. Um, used the vice block. Maybe I probably should have done that rather than just opposing wrenches. Um, I did during the testing, besides uh, replacing the um, gas system, um, I mean, I took out, I tried to, tried to lower, made sure the lower was working properly on another rifle. I took the bolt out so I could put a 5.56 five, bolt in the carrier and use that in another rifle just to make sure that some of these parts were working. Um, another known uh, rifles didn't have any issues. So what's coming up now is uh, I'm going to try a, a Noden Works AR Lite adjustable weight buffer system. You can go from 2.1 ounces to 4.2 or 4.1 ounces, something like that. And I'm going to see if the um, like a lighter buffer might provide less resistance for the 110 grain ammo to use. I'm also going to get some reloading um, supplies. I'm going to reload all these all this brass that I created testing this and reload it and see if I can come up with a uh, combination that may cycle it with what that kit, that buffer kit, or just the standard kit, uh, our standard buffer, which is which is three ounces. Um, so um, please look out for that, uh, like a part two video in, in the future. Uh, hopefully it won't take too long to put that one out because I'm, I'm really engaged in trying to get this thing uh, worked out. So hopefully it won't be as much time between this video and, and my next one. I have some other other video ideas uh, I got going on too. So um, hopefully there'll be more activity up here shortly. So anyway, thanks for um, tuning in. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any particular questions, you can try to reach me on the uh, comments, but I also have an email that I, I look uh, for specific questions that may come out. So that's uh, some information on the, uh, the end pane. So thanks a lot.